Um, you are the founder of Karma Fest. Uh, you've been doing this for over 15 years now. Um, it's labeled as a holistic psychic yoga festival. And you hold a couple of these each year, these large events. And in addition to the large events, you also do a number of other individual like workshops, shamanic journeys, um, other experiences on, on a pretty regular basis. Uh, I think your story is a pretty fantastic one. So you were working at Hopkins and you actually had a background in uh, psychology, uh, master's in developmental psych, um, and a second master's in clinical psychology. And then my understanding is that, so you were working at Johns Hopkins and different awarenesses came across your path. And from there, you actually started working on this program called Karma Fest. Right. Can you <clears throat> tell me a little bit of why, why did you shift? Well, um, to back up for the, for my education, I was finishing uh, clinical psych. So I was like okay. two classes away. And I think I had even started those two classes. So like I was so close. Um, at the same time, I had had a dream vision about uh, what ended up being Katrina. So it was the year of the Indonesia tsunami. And uh, so I had a, a dream and it, and I described it as like the tsunami but that the water would rise up in a city and it would be devastating. And I spoke about the dream before it happened. So six weeks later, Katrina happens. Oh. And around that time, I was having dreams and visions of a person with amber eyes. And he would, he would say, where are you? And I'd say, I'm coming. Like right, at, right at, when I heard about Katrina, I just wanted to go right away. So, um, and I would see this person and it ends up, I go down to Katrina and I meet Leotha and he's a shaman and he just rocked my world out of, you know, just being there to help other people. Um, it just exposure to one meditation with him where he was there to relieve the relief workers. He was there as a helper to help the workers. And there was yoga and there was meditation. And after I woke up from the meditation, I'm like, well, you're who I came to see. I think I'm supposed to promote this, promote you, which doesn't even make any sense because I was going to school. I was very close to being a therapist, what I always wanted to be. Um, at the same time, I had a beautiful career traveling around the world with like the highest, um, clinical trials for, for ophthalmology. It was a, it was, I had a really good existence and then the awakening happened and I just felt right away. I just felt that when I was in the psychology classes, it was always just uh, theoretical. It was always just theories, this theory, that theory, nobody was really doing any, I never, we never got to a point where we were actually doing anything for anyone. We did, we weren't mm -hmm. learning EMDR. We weren't learning uh, ways to sit and speak with people. It was still just all very uh, much theory. And when I did the yoga down at Katrina, I felt an instant change in my physical body. And then my breathing changed. Like it was just so, it was, it was just right there in front of me. It was just so physical, a physical change, something that uh, manifested right there. Um, and then when Leotha did his meditation, I think it just kind of connected me to my higher self. He was clearing chakras, he was drumming a little bit, um, and he was just guiding us on with the meditation. And that was all it took when I woke up. I was like, I was, I was just changed. I was totally changed. I mean, by the time I was leaving Katrina, which was three weeks later, maybe four weeks later, I was on the phone with Leotha scheduling our first retreat. Three months from meeting Leotha, within three months I had a retreat and within six months I had the first Karma Fest. And in that time, I was still just learning from them. I was just uh, listening to them, trying to apply little things at a time. 
And then as the years went on and the months went on and the experiences went on, then I, I kind of got more down and dirty and like did the yoga teacher training, did the modern mystery school training, went into the Swami order, just things like that. And none of those things were anything that I had planned to do in my lifetime or even thought about or considered. So, I mean, you had this traditional way of life and, and then this one experience turned everything on, on its head and right. you've been doing that nonstop ever since. I mean, it's, it's really impressive. I mean, you have it, what, in, I got, do you have anything Delaware? I mean, I, I know you have a number of workshops and stuff in Delaware, but I mean, your big events I know are in Maryland and Pennsylvania. Mm-hmm. And, Pennsylvania. Uh, we are doing a big, we're doing a big one down here in Delaware. We secured a place called Hudson Fields, and they have uh, 75 acres. The Karma Fest sign is already on Route 1, so um, hopefully they'll look up Karma Fest and come to our first show, which is our big show, the June event. But I'm expecting them to show up in mass. uh, That's wonderful. So your first event Delaware show. This is your 16th year or 17th year? Yeah, we're 16th year, so I just average well when I began I didn't I may have only had one festival by the time before COVID hit I had maybe six festivals in one year so I just say about 46 festivals or probably going on to 50 festivals and and just be you know that that one um occasion and experience kind of flipped me around and um put me on a different empowering and enlightening and happy path. I mean, it's been a struggle sometimes, but it was something that, that as, as we said, changed my life and changed the course of things. And that's why I like Karma Fest because we don't know who people are going to meet. They might just meet, a, it might be a volunteer talking to a volunteer. It might be someone going into a yoga class and having a realization. It might be when we do the shamanic journeys and then they have a big clearing from something that's haunted them for out this lifetime and sometimes even other lifetimes. So, well, I I've, as you know, been to many of your um, many of the festivals and, and I always get a lot out of them. I, I mean, I have a couple really pretty unusual stories. Um, maybe I'll share them in a bit. Um, one of them. I mean, I have so many, but it's just fantastic because you have intuitives, you have, psychics there you have Mm -hmm. healers there you have and then of course you also have the more conventional stuff like you know arts and crafts and music and bands and um yoga drum circles drum so i mean it's really fantastic i mean so it's it's good for all all sorts i even took my father who's not into any of this stuff and he actually enjoyed himself because you know it's a great place to be but yeah so one of my experiences at karma fest so this was boy this was probably about eight years ago I had gotten, well, had gotten divorced and had not dated for two years, uh, had not been with anybody, just wasn't able to dive into any of that. Uh, not because I didn't want to, but just because I wasn't able to, for whatever reason. And I started opening up to things um, metaphysical and I went to Karma Fest. It was one of the early years I went. And I remember going down this, uh, this path. And as I was walking down this dirt path, someone yelled out to me. She says, Hey, your heart chakra is blocked. Can I help you out with that? I was like, excuse me. She said, your heart chakra, it's, it's blocked. I was like, uh, you know, and so I started opening up to this stuff and, and I was like, okay, okay sure. I'll, I'll give it a try. Give me, give me some of your weirdness. <laughs> and she did. And it was fantastic. I, I would guess that it was probably Reiki. Um, she spent about 15 minutes with me. Uh, she was very nice, very knowledgeable. What was interesting about it is that I actually felt like a shift in my chest. Um, yeah, kind of like your, your food's processing, only it wasn't in my belly. It was up in my chest. And I thought that was kind of unusual. Again, I was kind of all new to this. So um, that was pretty cool. It was a neat experience. After about 15 minutes, I gave her her, you know, a couple bucks or whatever. And oh, it was all perhaps. about, you know, what's that? A couple bucks. <laughs> Couple, couple bucks, bucks for yeah. healing my heart. Thanks. <laughs> yeah. Um, but what was so neat was so I stood up and I took about three steps 
And this beautiful girl walked right up to me, beautiful lady walked right up to me and we started talking. And, you know, that went on for, for a little while. And I was like, hey, listen, I really need to use the restroom. Can, can I chat with you a little bit later? And she's like, absolutely. So I went and used the restroom. I came out of the restroom into um, the hallway. This was at, I believe, Oregon Ridge. Um, I, I know it was. And this other mm-hmm. beautiful girl just walked up to me or I, we kind of bumped into one another. And, and that person I ended up hanging out with for maybe six hours, um, but it, it was really weird. It was like a light switch went off. Mm. So this shift that I felt in my heart, I guess, was truly a thing. I guess it really happened. And it's very interesting how the energetics of an individual change right. your attraction, right? And in this case, it was that light switch. It change the attraction and from there moving forward i mean i never had a trouble dating i mean i just i it was it was kind of like i was making up for lost time <laughs> it, was, mm-hmm. it was a little interesting um but yeah so you know that was quite an amazing experience because i hadn't dated anybody for two years and then all of a sudden because of the shift that i physically felt mm-hmm. um I, I dated quite a bit after that and I, I had no, no problems. I actually have a story um, from a shamanic journey that has to do with a uh, heart opening. And there's a close karma fest friend. She was there for a journey and she had a few crystals that she was holding. And, and I think she brought this one crystal it was like a big heart and she had it at her heart. And so I'm doing the journey. And oftentimes I say things that other people are experiencing because I kind of get a glimpse or whatever I say might help this person or that person. So um, her intention was to heal her heart. And as we were, as I was cueing everyone up throughout the journey, hitting the drum, um, chanting, cueing some more, we did some heart chakra work and in her journey, she was seeing like fire at her heart and like this huge clearing and it, and and it was a big deal to her during the journey. So everything was focused on the heart for her. And then when she woke up and as she started processing and before she even, we got to share, she held up her, her crystal, her heart crystal, and it was broken in half. It was physically broken in half. Oh, wow. Which was just crazy. And so she's uh, telling us about her amazing um, journey and how, and the the cracked crystal. And I, I looked over and there was a big candle burning and it was about this big. And that candle had burned where a heart appeared right in the center of the candle it was it was wild it was wild so like as a group there's these interesting uh revelations or experiences that that they get basically out of of what spirit a spirit group uh uh experience and um one of the craziest things that I've ever seen in a journey was a journey that I did at a retreat in Virginia beach. This is it's not, so okay. we, we do a journey and um, there was one person in the journey that would always take time to wake up and he would stay in his journey a long time where I'd always wonder, you know, what was going on. Um, And this, this guy would also see other people's journeys. It was his history in the, in our circle. He would say, it was kind of like Wizard of Oz and you were there and you were there and I saw you there. That's how he usually rolled during a journey after he woke up. So anyway, at this particular time, we were in a circle and he wouldn't wake up and he was actually speaking and he was speaking in uh he wasn't speaking English and so everybody else is already sitting up and we're waiting for him and two ladies that were sitting beside him he was still laying down but they had sat up and 
they're like giggling, they're laughing. I'm like, I'm like, what's up? And they were from Ukraine. I'm pretty sure they were from the Ukraine. And they're like, he's speaking our language. And I'm like, what? Yeah. He's saying, where did everybody go? Where did everybody go? So he was still in like this group shamanic experience because uh, he hadn't woke up. Everybody else was awake and he was he does not speak a foreign language. He was actually speaking in their language. I mean, it was wow. crazy. That was really interesting. You know, you hear about that, that with um, um, like hypnosis. Like amnesia. And, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like past life hypnosis, whether someone can yeah. write like hieroglyphics, for example, or, um, or, you know, many other languages that they don't, they don't currently speak. Mm -hmm. I, I guess he was in some sort of, well, I guess that's what a shamanic journey does is it, it kind of puts you in a in it's, a altered it's very state. hypnotic yeah it's an altered right. hypnotic state yeah so you do all of this i mean you know obviously um um psychology is is largely in your background and you kind of stepped away from a lot of the traditional uh teachings and jumped right into all of this because you felt like this was a um a better tool for bringing it to the masses is, is that right yeah, I think so. I, I think maybe because uh, there was some immediate relief, that might have been why I thought okay. I wanted to do that. But it's a constant, it's, it's constant work. We've had COVID, we've had times yeah. where basically the, those that thought they all, you know, they had it all together, and they always would, they're like freaking out and breaking down. Um, so um, I, I, don't, I don't see it as two separate things anymore. I just wanted to go that way, maybe because I was to learn certain things. I got to do healing work on people. I got to learn the shamanic journey and that type of thing. I, I still feel that um, psychology is important for folks that need help. At the same time, I can't use psychology to figure out this, the spiritual stuff. I, I haven't okay. been able to bridge that. Um, but again, a lot of what I was learning was uh, mostly theory and some, some research. Um, so I see them as, as two separate things. At the same time, I think in the the world of the mystic there's understandings of healing the past the past is being stored in your body we can go tap into it we can clear it out psychology is caught up to that uh they do emdr that type of thing and um there's a connection there so that's wonderful um i think young people have access to a lot of psychological help uh, and not, that not just that, they have the knowledge. They have some basic knowledge where people are working on themselves all the time now. Um, sometimes it takes a step to go see a therapist, but I'm not really someone that, that should be listened to in that regard. I, that's, not, that's not my thing anymore. If people want to go to therapy, they should go to therapy. If people want to try something else, they can try something else. They want to bridge those things, they should bridge those things. If they want to um, explore different faiths, then do that. So I don't really uh, try to push, I never push people in any one direction because I think that there's just so many, the individual. Well, that's one, one of the things uh, that you just said here is um, the, the path is different for everyone. Um, actually on, on the first video that we had done, the path is, you said, the path is different for everyone. And so Karma Fest allows for a wide variety of modalities and a wide variety of healers. Now, in regards to um, psychology versus some of the spiritual stuff, you know, I, I tend to have a little different um, feeling about it. I feel like there is a, a, a fairly large merger and the, the, two, are, and the two are coming together. Um, and I'm seeing that with 
you know, I'm, I'm meeting a lot of psychologists these days. And a lot of those oh, psychologists okay. are using uh, methods that uh, involve the spirit or involve the, well, I say subconscious, but that's, I mean, that can certainly easily fall into um, psychology as well. But um, there, there's methods, uh, modalities that um, even people like Joe Dispenza, there's scientific backing yes. that support. There uh, is the more bringing, of that. The bringing mm-hmm. the two together and yeah. the merger of the two. So um, from my perspective, I, I see that everything kind of coming together, at least to some degree. I mean, you're going to have, you know, your, your, your different uh, um, polarization, but I, I see that crossover and I, I think it's really fantastic. And oh, not, only if, not only in um, psychology, but also in, um, in medicine and, in, in you know, in the medical field. Um, I mean, I, I spoke to a good friend of mine. Uh, Last night, and uh, now she works at Hopkins, and Hopkins is a little bit more lenient with the way they um, tend to label things, but she does, she has now been given the okay to do quite a number of different um, energetic modalities on patients Mm -hmm. in, in, in Hopkins, because there is data um, that, you know, shows that it's effective enough data right. that Hopkins is like, okay, that that's great. That, that right. will now get covered under. That's, what, uh, that's amazing. So, um, that's amazing. So I I'm really excited with, I mean, there, there's a lot of people that can, you know, have their own kind of negative take on Western medicine and that that's fine. And then there's other people that are like, you know, the, this, new philosophy is kind of merging together mm-hmm. with Western medicine. Um, so I think it's just a whole, a whole variety of That's good, wonderful. bad, and the other, right. That, that we're now yeah. facing with. Yes. Um, I think but, my own personality, uh, I did the, I did research. I worked in, in science and I can do that, but at the same time, I'm a Pisces. And so once I saw the magic, I just wanted to see, I just wanted to keep seeing the magic. So I, I let that go and just focused on magic. And also, um, Hmm. you know, what we, what we think we become and what we think we see and what we believe we also see. So I'm, I'm really glad that uh, Western medicine is, is merging. um, And I yeah. think that's wonderful. Yeah. So what advice do you have for people looking for, for help with pain or struggles or just life issues? I'm not going against doctor's orders, but if you have certain uh, ailments, I think with a little research, we can find some really cool holistic help. And then I simply just ask, I muscle test everything I do. You know, that's just me. That's someone that is, uh, that knows a lot of different modalities. Those that may not know as much. um, I know we can often get a little bamboozled with certain things, which uh, I try to be careful of when it comes to Karma Fest. one thing won't work for everybody. I really don't think that one thing will work for every single person. Um, so when people talk about a certain product, it'll work, you know, broad spectrum product. I, I don't, I don't really uh, abide by that. I think it depends on the person. It depends on the circumstances. Oftentimes, um, People will have physical ailments. If you read Doreen Virtue and they come in with a physical ailment and even what Edgar Casey did, most everyone came with a physical complaint and almost all of them, he would show them what was happening in their physical lives that was manifesting it or um, in a past life. And Dolores Cannon would put people in a hypnotic state and um find out why people were having certain problems and they were often found to be past life related as well. So I'm not saying that every single thing is past life related. Um, 
I think it's different for different people. I think people should never lose hope. I think they should reach out. I think they should pray on it. What I do is sleep on it, meditate on it, um, and also do simple things as well as you're moving forward. Oftentimes when we don't feel well, we shut down. And so maybe we're not doing our yoga stretches. Maybe we're not taking the walk. Maybe we're, we're not drinking a lot of water. We can do simple things as we're trying to find a uh, bigger help. For some reason today seems to be the message of, of just not losing hope. I think there's uh, with, with medical help and even uh, therapy, with holistic help, with Googling something and finding some information, with touching base with your own physical needs by asking your body uh, what may benefit you. I think there's so much at our fingertips that we can really um, work with to stay not just physically healthy, but even kind of reverse aging to to a certain extent I, and i know I totally, I totally agree with you i mean i mean as you know you are a large part of the reason i'm doing what i'm doing now um the global healing hub which um, not long ago was called uh, karma hub and it largely was inspired by you know with your support and what it is you're doing um and it's really about having a smorgasbord maybe of different modalities, different methods, different healing methods, um, and, 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 and different, uh, practitioners that can deliver them. Right. And, and that's, and that's kind of what you do at, uh, at Karma Fest. You have such a, a wide variety of, uh, modalities and practitioners and, and they're there at that festival. And right. mine's just kind of a, maybe a digital version of that. Um, of sorts, then you can connect with them, you know, one-on-one. -on -one. Um, but I, I, I totally believe that each individual person, different things are going to resonate with them. Like the, like even acupuncture does not do much for me and it does a lot for a lot of people. Um, yeah, it's each individual is, is different mm -hmm. and no one thing yeah. is, going, is a cure-all. And I, I think people need to keep that in mind when they have issues and something doesn't work, they right. can't give up. They need to try something else. Yeah, yeah. And you don't have to, um, I mean, some things do take time, um, but if someone or some establishment is is pushing for something to be the only way, I would walk. I would walk. Right. <laughs> So thank you for what you there do. Are, there are thank many you for that might be the, me. That might be the way. What's that? I said thank you for what you do and thank you for inspiring uh, me to do what, what I'm now doing. Oh, uh, cool. Yeah, I'm inspired by what you're doing. It's awesome. Well, only because I was inspired by what you're doing. And <laughs> then around and around. It's just around and, and around. around. There we go. <laughs> Together. <laughs> Cool. Yeah, very cool. Well, um, before we wrap this up, is there anything that you'd like to like to add? Mm, I mean, some people that have known me through Karma Fest for a while, they're like, are you ever going to stop? Or when are you going to stop? Or <laughs> that type of thing. And um, I, I just feel that as long as people want this and ask about it and ask for it that we'll keep trying to open up for those people and so my little program this year I don't have it handy but it says you are welcome here and I just feel that in these times there's so much division and people feeling excluded and feeling unseen and unheard and I just wanted to put a a uh, call out for that, that uh, Karma Fest is a welcoming place. You will feel welcome there. You'll feel happy there. You'll feel peaceful there. Um, typically, you may uh, learn something. You may realize something. And um, every festival is different. Every hour of the festival is changing. And 
And life is like that too. We may have bad days, but I really want people to just hang on, uh, work through it, find resources and um, stay open for, for better times. Cause I really do think they're ahead. So, better times are yeah. ahead. That's amazing. Yeah. I mean, Chroma Fest is, is really magical and there's something there for everybody. Um, mm -hmm. yeah. It really is. Even even kids. I mean, there's places for kids. So if you have kids, bring them. Yeah.